Okay guys, so this is going to be uh, your lesson over temperature and density. Um, so there's three main scales that we use for temperature conversions. Uh, Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 times the degree Celsius plus 32. Degree Celsius is Fahrenheit minus 32 all divided by 1.8. Kelvin, uh, the Kelvin scale is degree Celsius plus 273. Now, it's important to know that Kelvin doesn't have degrees. Um, and if you want to write this formula down, degrees Celsius from Kelvin is Kelvin minus 273. That might be useful for you. Okay, so water boils in Fahrenheit at 212. Um, it freezes at 32 Fahrenheit. It boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius, boils at 373 Kelvin and it freezes at 273 Kelvin. Okay, so the Kelvin scale is based upon a principle called absolute zero. Uh, absolute zero is the principle that all molecular motion stops uh, at that temperature. Uh, it has never been reached. They've got within like 0 0.01 Kelvin, uh, but they haven't actually reached it. Um, Super, super difficult. Uh, if you've ever seen the, the movie, uh, The Day After Tomorrow, wait, The Day After Tomorrow, I believe, where they have the huge hurricanes uh, that are like ice storms that are um, over the continents and everything like that. And they have that scene where he's going to rescue his son and the flag stops moving. Well, that's when it reaches absolute zero. Um, everything in math and science is based upon the principle that we're going to always have some sort of movement. So it would invalidate everything about science, engineering, math that we know. Okay. Um, there's another scale you might actually see in some of your classes called the Rankin scale. It's like the absolute scale for, um, for Fahrenheit. Uh, I believe it's 457 plus degrees Fahrenheit or 460. Uh, anyways, we're not going to use this in that this class, so just um, be aware of that. Okay, first example problem. If, uh, oh, also, if you don't have a calculator, you need to get a calculator uh, for the uh, starting now, okay? So if a weather forecaster predicts that the temperature for the day will reach 31 degrees Celsius, what is the predicted temperature in Kelvin and Fahrenheit? So Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. So Kelvin is equal to 31 plus 273. And I'm going to go put that in my calculator. So 31 plus 273 is 304 degrees Kelvin. Or Kelvin, not, not degrees. Okay, Fahrenheit. Degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 degrees Celsius plus 32. Okay, so degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 times 31 plus 32. Now order of operations says you have to do the multiplication first. So let's do the multiplication first. So 31 times 1.8 plus 32 is 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's your answers to this. Uh, ethylene glycol, which is, um, which is antifreeze, Okay, it's an antifreeze, freezes at negative 11.5 degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point in Kelvin and Fahrenheit. Okay, so Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. So we take the negative 11.5 plus 273, and then we're going to put in a calculator. So negative 11.5 plus 273 comes out to be 261.5. Okay, what is the freezing point in Fahrenheit? So degrees Fahrenheit, same formula. You need to make sure you show your formulas and your setups because I can't give you partial credit if you don't do that. Okay, same thing again. We're gonna multiply those together first. Need 11.3. So instead of the water in your engine freezing at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to freeze at 11.3 degrees Fahrenheit because 
it's mixed in, the ethylene glycol is mixed in with the water. So it's going to lower the freezing point. That's called a colligative property. Okay. Um, so the average summer temperature in southeast Texas is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Convert this temperature to Celsius and Kelvin. Now, it's important to know that whenever you go from, uh, when you go to Kelvin, you always have to go through degrees, degrees Celsius first. Okay. So uh, degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 over 1.8 that's going to be your formula for degrees celsius so i mean 95 minus 32 divided by 1.8 coffee cups so 95 minus 32 i'm going to hit enter and then divide by 1.8 or use parentheses so you get 35 degrees Celsius. Now, I want to go to Kelvin. So Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. Okay, so we're going to do 35 plus 273. So 35 plus 273 comes out to be 308 Kelvin. Okay, on to the factor. Now, when we're talking about density, density is uh, the ratio of, of mass to volume of a substance. Um, it's an intensive property, means it doesn't matter how much of the matter you have. Um, so in chemistry, we're going to be in grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter cube. Okay, so it's important to know that a milliliter is equal to a centimeter cube. Okay, just keep that in mind. So your grams. Uh, some, some of these will be in kilograms, so you're going to have to convert in your homework. You might have to convert milliliters using metric system. So we'll go through those on the homework set. So the formula for uh, density is rho is equal to mass over volume. So when we get into upper level uh, chemistry and physics, we don't write density by D. We write it by rho. Okay, the Greek letter row. It's mass over volume. Now I'm going to show you a little formula triangle that works really, really good for when we're working these problems out. It's called the MDV triangle. Okay, so this is how it works. If I'm looking for mass, I cover up mass, and I get density times volume. If I'm looking for density, it's mass over volume. If I'm looking for volume, it's mass over density. Okay, so that way you don't have to do any sort of algebra involved. Uh, you have something called specific gravity is the density of a substance divided by another substance. Uh, it's unitless. Uh, some, if you, uh, if you go look at like things in lab, uh, the, they might go by specific gravity, but it's not gonna be anything we're gonna be dealing with in this class. Okay, first example problem, it says, if I have 2.117 liters of an unknown substance and it has a mass of 876.2 grams, what is the density of the unknown in grams per centimeter cube? Okay, so our first step is we have to identify our givens. So this is going to be a volume. Okay, it's in liters. Now, we need to get to milliliters. Okay, so we always have to be in milliliters when we're doing this. So if we do our King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk like we did a couple lessons ago we're in our base unit liters and we have to get to milliliters so we're going to move our decimal place three to the right so one two three so our volume is equal to two one one seven milliliters or centimeters cubed because they're the same thing okay our mass is given in grams it's 876.2. And if I'm looking for density, what is the density? Whatever follows the question word is what I'm looking for. So density is mass over volume. So we're just going to do 876.2 divided by 2117. And I get my answer. So I get 0.414.
and we're in grams per centimeter cubed. Okay. Next question it says the density of a substance is given as 0.231 grams per centimeter cubed. What is the volume of the substance if the mass is 10.4 grams? Okay. So what is the volume? I'm looking for volume. So this is my density, and this is going to be my mass because it's in grams. So if I'm looking for volume, I'm going to cover up the V in the triangle, so I do mass divided by density. Okay, so we're going to do 10.4 divided by 0.231. So 10.4 divided by 0.231 get 45.022. Go at least two decimal places. And we're in centimeter cube. Or milliliter, same thing. Okay, last example problem on this. So it says an object has a density of 1.2 grams per centimeter cube. What is the mass of the object if the volume is 0.6 centimeter cube? Okay, so we're given our density and we're given our volume. Centimeter cube is volume. We're looking for mass. So if I go to my triangle, cover up mass, you get density times volume. So mass is equal to density times volume. Your density is 1.2. Your volume is 0.6. Okay. So if I multiply those two numbers together, it's 0.72. And I should be in grams. Okay, so this has been your density notes, uh, temper temperature and density notes. Um, what I would do is I would pause this video. Um, I'm probably gonna put the other one in the homework in another video because it's got a few problems on it. So um, I would pause and then I would check my work on um, the homework. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks, bye.